So that's good? I'll just. Okay, thank you. I'm going to leave Colton my phone in case he needs you. Okay. Thank you, bye.
Over oh, half has never yet been told. Hallelujah. We have the Word of God to understand things, but as I said, I believe Wednesday night, we don't know all that heaven has to offer. Hallelujah. We, we, we know some, and we know uh, <coughs> everything is good, but we don't know it all. Hallelujah. Right. But one day we'll be there. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer techniques of the church. Let's remember our lost loved ones that they'll be saved before it's too late. Also, our children. God will bless them and minister their lives. Also, our school personnel, staff, teachers, bus drivers, Lord, will touch them all. Uh, let's remember Marcia's family and all the ones traveling. Also, let's keep Alvin and Nancy in prayer, Lord, to touch them and bless them. Also, Brother Tim, he's home. Let's keep Brother Tim in prayer, Lord, to touch him and Angel ministering her needs. Also, let's keep Rita in prayer. Lord, will touch her and minister her need. Also, Miss Linda, Lord, will touch her. Also, uh, uh, Sister Tucker's uh, Aunt Linda, let's keep her in prayer. God will move and minister in that need. Also, let's keep uh, Brother Sister Tucker's daughter, Danielle, in prayer. We're going to anoint a prayer cloth tonight in just a moment for her. God will touch and minister in her need and her situation. Also, let's keep Pam's family in prayer. Lord, will touch them. Also, Miss Abby. Uh, also, let's keep Becky and Candace and Kim and, uh, and, and Melinda and Julia and all the ones that's out not feeling well. Let's keep all of them in prayer. Let's keep uh, Charles and Debbie Talbert's family in prayer and their new grandbaby. God will move and minister and touch in their lives. Let's just keep all of them in prayer. All the ones that are here tonight for whatever reason, let's keep them in prayer. God will just move and minister in their life. All the ones at home, I'm sure you have needs and situations the Lord knows all about. We're going to remember you tonight. God will touch in your need. I wonder if I, uh, there will be an urgent request to give in tonight. Yes. Procedure tomorrow, touching the mighty way, reach down and bless. Lord, do the word, Lord, reach down and touch me. 
Ask God to move and minister in the lives of the people and the hearts of the people and do a mighty work in lives and touch each and every one. So don't forget conference call 7 o'clock Tuesday night. Don't forget about that. Also, uh, Wednesday night, family training hour at 7. Be invited be telling people to uh, worship the Lord with us. Come on out next Sunday, Sunday school 10. Want to worship 11, Sunday night 6. Be invited be telling people. God is so good. Mercy endures forever. So keep inviting, keep telling people. Uh, just a couple weeks away is homecoming, October the 18th. Don't forget about that. Got a lot of things coming up towards the end of the year. We're going to be having our men's and women's meeting soon. We uh, we did uh, postpone it from today due to uh, many uh, out today. So we're going to have that soon. Uh, several things to discuss about the uh, uh, activities we'll be doing at the end of the year. So don't forget about that. We'll be much in prayer. Uh, just remember one special announcement. Jesus is coming soon. Ready or not, he's coming for a church. He's coming for a people. He's coming for each and every one that's looking for his return. Those not looking for him will be left behind. Those looking for him will get to go when he calls their name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Have I missed any announcements? Hallelujah. Have I missed any announcements? <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Worship the Lord. Sister Gail sings a special in just a moment. If you have offering or tithe tonight, I'm just going to, if you want, would like to walk up here and uh, just uh, put your tithe and offering in uh, the plate, you're welcome to. Don't have anyone walk around tonight with the uh, offering plate, but if you wish to bring tithe and offering, you feel free to do so. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to give those that have to give, those that have not. God, we ask you to use this offer, Lord. Use it for your will, uh, willpower and for your name's sake. For the good in your kingdom. God, I just ask you to have your way reached out and bless in the midst of your people. Let your will be done. Bless each and every soul, each and every life. Use it for your name's sake and your glory. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Worship the Lord. Sister Gail, sing this special. This song says, Touching Jesus is all that matters. Yes. Oh, yes.
Lord, my Jesus is alive. Hallelujah. So good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. If you have your Bibles, John chapter 21. John chapter 21, familiar passage. Maybe you brought about in a different manner than you've heard before. Hallelujah. John 21 and 1. You love the Lord tonight, say amen if you do. Amen. amen. Say hallelujah. 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 God is so good to us. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. John 21, beginning verse 1. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias, and on this wise showed he himself. There were together Simon Peter and Thomas called Didymus and Nathaniel of Canaan, Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee, and two other of his disciples. Simon Peter said unto them, I go a fishing. They say unto him, We also go with thee. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately, and that night they caught nothing. But when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. They said Jesus unto them, Children, have ye any meat? They answered him, No. And he said unto them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find it. They cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. Heavenly Father, I come before you this night, loving you and praising you. I thank you one more time for allowing us to be here. God, I ask you, Lord, to mention the message one more time. Go out of heaven upon our flesh, Lord. Reach out, Lord, our ears to hear our hearts to receive what you have for us. God, move in a mighty way. Use us and mold us and make us. In Jesus' holy name we pray. And the church said, Amen. Amen. I want to talk about a left-sided ship tonight. Anyone ever seen a left-sided ship? Praise the Lord. We got, we're going to talk about a left-sided ship. You know, we're all, we're all in a ship of some sort as we travel through the waters of this life. There are many obstacles that come up. There are many things that come in our way. There are many uh, <clears throat> problems we might face. There are many situations we might face, many things that we might face. There's many things that come our way that uh, we are traveling through this life on a ship. Now, the ship to be on is the good old gospel ship that will take you out of this world alive and will carry you to a better place. But as, we, as we're in the gospel ship, we all have our individual ships that we have to uh, that we have to maneuver and things that we have to do. We have our own individual lives and our own individual choices and our own individual ideas and our own individual thoughts. And uh, many, many times uh, we have things in life that fool us and uh, many things in life that come against us. You know, we, we have to uh, wrestle the enemy every day. We, we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities every day of our life. We're fighting a warfare. We're fighting an enemy that is out there. We're fighting an enemy that is that is on every corner. We have many options. We have the Satan. We have to fight. We have this <clears throat> new pandemic that uh, that is going on in the world. This this uh, unseen as far as uh, uh, this virus that is deadly that is uh, uh, that has come against uh, all of humanity and come against mankind. We have that to uh, that is an obstacle. We have all the rioting that in other places and, and even in our local areas that is uh, an obstacle that we have to maneuver through. And so we, we have many obstacles that we face on a daily basis and that we face as a church and as a Christian people. We have many obstacles that we face. We have many uh, false religions and, and false uh, uh, people out here and many things uh, uh, that are just floating by and, and trying to get our attention. And, and as we look at this, we see that Jesus came by while these disciples were on this ship and, and the disciples didn't know that it was Jesus at the time. They didn't understand that it was Jesus at the time, but he came by and he, he seen those disciples and now those disciples had fished all night long. And when Jesus asked them, have you got any meat? Do you have any fish? They said no. They had fished all night and came up empty handed. Now let me tell you, let me just talk for just a moment here. It's very terrible. It's a very uh, oblique time when you fish all night and catch nothing. And I know, I know about the fishing and catching nothing. I, I fished several bass tournaments before and, and I love to fish and I fished several bass tournaments and uh, when you fish a bass tournament, usually you start out right before daylight, usually around 7, and it ends at 3. So you're talking about 8 hours of fishing. And I fished many uh, or several bass tournaments and came up empty-handed. They caught a fish all day. Matter of fact, I didn't even have a bite. The only bite I've had is when I put a snack in my mouth. Praise the Lord. And so, you know, it's very, it's very, uh, very terrible. 
to go all day long and not catch a fish. And I can just imagine staying up all night and not sleeping at all and trying to catch a fish and they ain't caught a fish. Now, now they weren't fishing with rods and reels, uh, so to speak. They were fishing with nets. They had nets because uh, what was they told to do? Cast on the right on the other side and they couldn't pull in the net for the fish. Now, it's, pretty, it's a pretty bad day when you go out and net and you don't catch any fish. That's a pretty bad day. Uh, that's, a pretty, that's a pretty rough night. And uh, these fishermen, I, I'm just having fun tonight. Y'all just bear with me. These fishermen, <clears throat> these fishermen, they fished all right. They, just, they, knew how to, they knew how to fish. The sons of uh, uh, the sons of Zebedee, they knew how to fish because they were called while they were fishing with their daddy and they were out there mending their nets. So they knew how to fish. They knew where to fish. They knew exactly where to go and throw the nets out. They didn't just go somewhere that they'd never been before, didn't know nothing about. They just said, well, this looks like a good spot to throw their net. No, they went to a place where they knew there was fish. They knew there was a place. They wouldn't just go any old where they, or any old place. They went to a place where they knew there was fish. But yet every time they cast that net out, they had nothing in the net. They had nothing to show for their time. Nothing. They spent all night. Now, no doubt, maybe one of the disciples said to another, you know what? When daylight gets here, we're going home. We're going to fix us some bacon and some eggs and grits. And we're just going to go take us a, a long nap today. This has been a rough night. Maybe one of the other disciples said, you know what? I, I, I think I think we better just, just hang here and get this fishing up. We ain't doing too good fishing. We fished all night. Ain't caught nothing. We might as well go find us another job. You know, maybe another one said, you know what? Maybe we ought to go uh, be a carpenter or something instead of a fisherman. Maybe we ought to do something. A little different. Maybe they begin to reason within themselves and think, you know what? This ain't hit so much. We, we, we're fishing all night. We, we're doing this, and, and it's just not, uh, things are not happening. But you see, I want to talk about that left side. They had thrown out on the left side all night. They, they didn't choose the right side until Jesus spoke, and we'll get to that. <clears throat> but they had been fishing on the left side all night. Now, no doubt, I, I mean, I just, I just can't help but wonder why did they fish on the left side all night? Why did they throw out on the other side? Why did they always throw out on that side? Why did they always throw out on that, that one certain side? Maybe it's where their equipment was to pull in the net. Maybe it's where they, uh, maybe it's uh, the side that they knew where there was a little uh, a little trench in the water where fish like to go with a little deeper water where it was like a, kind of like a valley there. Maybe it was a place where they knew it was a, it was a gully in between rock where the fish like to go and to feed and, and everything. I don't know why they continue to throw on that uh, on that one side and, and as, they, as they begin to, uh, as they cast out and they were cast out on one side, they, uh, they were cast out on that one particular side and so I call it a left side of ship and so uh, when Jesus told them to cast on the other side they cast out on the right side and we'll get to that in a moment but I want you to understand on the left side of ship first of all was discouragement first of all was discouragement they went all night and didn't have a fish they went all night and had no meat went all night and didn't have anything in the net went all night and didn't have anything to show for their time or their effort and no doubt discouragement began to creep in no doubt discouragement began to come into their lives no doubt discouragement began to take place because you know what that's what happens with humans that's what happens with people when we do things and things don't work out the way we think it all to the world does our mind go first of all to discouragement we get discouraged and dismayed we get to a point that we say what's the use right and then we begin to say what's the use you know why why are we even doing this why are we even fishing why are we why are we even doing this right here you see all we can catch is nothing you know many times uh, people in the church world they they, they, they keep going out on that left side of, uh, part of their ship they have a left side of the ship because discouragement has crept in because they haven't uh, been able to witness like they wanted to or maybe they hadn't seen as many souls saved as they wanted to or maybe they hadn't uh, talked to as many people and testified as they wanted to you know what if they get discouraged they say well I might as well just give up I, I'm not able to tell this one or that one about Jesus let me tell you it ain't no time to give up no time for discouragement it's time to wait and just throw out on the other side it's time to just wait because there's another side to the story Amen. there's another side to the issue right. hallelujah <laughs> You see, before we let discouragement creep in, we need to do something about that. But before we let discouragement get us down and get us out and get us and get us just to throw it in and throw it in the town and give, and give it up. You see, it said, but when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. You see, they, they had so much, uh, no doubt, they had they had so much discouragement that, would, that had been placed in their life. They weren't thinking about Jesus coming to see them. They weren't thinking about Jesus coming to help them. What they was thinking about 
as we've been doing this all night and we have nothing to show for it. You know, like there, there's many people in the church world and that are discouraged tonight because they've been thrown out on the left side. They've been casting out and they've been trying and they've been doing the very best they can. And because of sickness or because of health problems or because of financial problems or because of emotional problems or whatever, uh, discouragement has set in. Let me tell you, don't let discouragement set in. Hallelujah. Because there's another side to the ship. It don't have to all be left side. It don't have to all be on the same side. Hallelujah. Because something can take place when Jesus gets involved. When Jesus comes on the shore. When Jesus comes by the wayside and begins to look and begins to call upon us and begins to call our name. It's going to get better, church. It's going to get more awesome and awesome every time we talk to Jesus. Discouragement. No doubt there's many people tonight across the church world that feels like they're on the left side of the ship. They've tried everything they know to try. They've prayed as hard as they know to pray. They've prayed as long as they know to pray. They've done all that they know to do. And yet, no relief has come at this moment. And so the enemy jumps up on their shoulders in the front porch and says, I told you so. It ain't going to work out. Just throw in the towel and give up. Just quit casting the net. Because all it is is failure and losing. Let me tell you tonight when the devil jumps up and says that, when the devil begins to sit on your front porch and tell you that, you believe the exact opposite because the devil don't know how to tell the truth. Right. The devil's nothing but a liar and the father of all lies. He don't know how to tell the truth, so we don't need to listen to anything he says. You need to take what he says and you need to turn it around. You know, like, oh, hallelujah. Like some, some politicians we hear today in today's time. We need to take the exact opposite and believe that. Hallelujah. We need to take exactly uh, what the devil says and turn it around and believe the exact opposite. So when he tells you you're not doing good, just know that you are doing good. When he tells you you're on the wrong track, just know that you're on the right track where he wouldn't be messing with you. And hallelujah. When he comes against you and says all oh, is going to fall and all is going to fail, just understand that he wouldn't be messing with you if it was. Everything's going to be great and you're building upon the kingdom of God. You're building upon the solid rock. Just let God work in your life. Let God do what needs to be done. Amen. Hallelujah. Discouragement set in. Discouragement is on the left side. Left side of the ship. That's discouragement. Try it all day long. All week long to witness to this one or that one. Maybe you said, well, I've tried to tell my family member. I've tried to tell my neighbor about Jesus all week long, but they won't listen. Just because they ain't listened yet, don't give up. Just because they ain't got saved yet, don't give up. Hallelujah. Just because healing has not come in a, in a, in a right immediately, don't give up on healing. God is in the healing business, and what God says he'll do, he'll do it. Hallelujah. My sister, I can't get over what Sister Gail said this morning. Hallelujah. we got to walk believing. we got to know that it's already done. Hallelujah. We not, might not see the results at this moment, and it might feel like we cast down on the left side, but know when Jesus is involved, when Jesus is in control, everything's going to be A-OK, -okay and everything's going to be all right. Hallelujah. Because he wouldn't have said, uh, by his stripes, we are healed if we couldn't be healed. A lot of people think that, well, he might heal me, he might do this or might do that. No, he doesn't might, but he does. Hallelujah. He does heal. Now, I understand that sometimes he don't heal on this side. He heals on the other side. I understand that. I can't answer why. I can't tell you how come he heals on this side for some and some he don't. I don't understand that and I don't know that. It's not for me to know. But what I do know is that as long as God's in it and God's in control, everything's going to be all right. Hallelujah. Uh, yea, though they, uh, yea, though I walk to the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Hallelujah. You know what? I might have to walk through that valley of the shadow of death and I might not get healed on this side, but I know there's a day coming where I will be healed and I'll be walking around the throne of grace and I'll be praising his holy name. Hallelujah. I don't have to uh, believe and understand that it, I've just got a left-sided ship. I don't have to live in discouragement my whole life. I don't have to live in discouragement every day of the week. I can be happy and have that joy. Hallelujah. Unspeakable and full of glory. I don't have to worry about a thing because I know who holds the Amen. Hallelujah. Secondly, on the second side, on the left side, is a loss of faith. There's a lot of people, good, godly people, that have served God a long time, that have been riding on the left side of the ship because they've seen discour had discouragement in their life, but because whatever they're needing from God hasn't happened yet, they quit believing God will do it. 
They quit believing God can. They quit believing God will. They just give up on God. They've lost their faith. My Bible tells me if we have the faith size of a grain of mustard seed, we can say to this mountain, move you to yonder place, and it has to go, right? If, if, if the mountain's got to go, the problem has to go as well. But we've got to have that faith. And you see what happens is the enemy wants to get our faith. The enemy gets our faith because we walk by faith, not by sight. And serving Jesus is by faith only, right? So if the devil gets our faith, if the left side of the ship, if discouragement gets our faith, then we lose our faith. Then we've lost the whole battle. We've lost the whole war. We've lost everything. When we lose our faith, then we begin to say, well, he's not going to do it for me. I was told 98 years ago he was going to do this for my family, but I guess he's not. That's a lie of the devil. When God promises you something, he'll do it. Just like I did with Abraham. Hallelujah. It didn't matter how old Abraham and Sarah was. If they would have been 229 years old to peace. When God said he was going to give them a son, he was going to give them a son. It didn't matter how old they were or how young they were. When God said that he'll do it, hallelujah, it doesn't matter. When God said that he was going to, oh, he was going to send a, a, a helper, he was going to send someone back. And don't, uh, and the wall, all that mattered was that Jesus, when he was crucified, that he made it to glory because the Holy Ghost come back. When he said he would send the Holy Ghost back, the Comforter back to this earth, that's exactly what he did. When he, when he sent Jesus to be born of a virgin Mary, hallelujah, to, to wipe away the sins of the world, hallelujah, when he said he would do that, and he, he was prophesied about in the Old Testament, when he said he would do that, you know what he did? He did it. When God says something, you can take it to the bank, you can stand on it, you can step on it, you can shout on it, because it's going to take place. Let me tell you, you don't have to worry about the left side of the ship anymore. When God gets involved, hallelujah, you don't have to let your faith be gone or faith be dwelling, but believe and trust in Him. Let your faith begin to swell up, hallelujah. You might not see it today, you might not see it tomorrow, but you better keep looking because it's coming, hallelujah. When you got faith to believe, everything's going to be all right. And hallelujah, God's going to work through your life. He's going to work through your obstacles. He's going to work through the things that you have going on. Going to make it all better. Yes. Hallelujah. Loss of faith. No doubt. When they was casting that net on that one side, on the left side, I call it the left side. When he was casting that net, no doubt they brought up no fish. No doubt they began to lose faith in themselves. No doubt they would have thought, you know, why we're we not catching anything? Have we lost our knack? Have we lost? What we knew how to do? Have we have we lost our mind and not able to do what we've always been taught to do? No doubt they begin to lose faith in themselves. And I'm afraid that's what many Christians have allowed to happen. They've lost faith in themselves. You see, God anoints his people. God pours into his people, you and I. All those that's viewing, all, all the Christians across this world, all the true Christians across this world, God pours into us and he anoints us. Hallelujah for a time such as this. He anoints us and he gives us and he gives us those abilities and we've got to keep the faith. We can't give in and give up. We can't lose the faith just because it, you know what, now's the time to shine. You know, many people across the world have lost their faith through this pandemic called COVID-19. Many people have lost their faith. They have quit believing God's going to do what he said he would do. They have quit believing. God has anointed them and God has blessed them and touched them and, and ministered in their life. But yet they have set down on God. Now's the time for the Christians to shine. We can still tell people about the love of God. Oh yes, we have to social distance. Oh yes, we have to do things cautiously. But let me tell you, hallelujah, there's no reason that phone line stays on 24-7. Hallelujah, there's no reason why we can't call people and tell them about God's mercy and God's love. I'm talking about faith. I'm talking about when we believe God's going to do something, we need to be sharing it with other people. We need to be letting people know. We need to be sharing with people. Hallelujah. We might not can shake hands at the present moment, but you know what? We can wave and say, God bless you, my brother. God bless you, my sister. Hold on. Hold on to the torch. Hold on to the fire of God. That's what we've got to do. We have a lot of people, <clears throat> hallelujah, that have closed down their faith. They've closed down. They've said, well, oh, hallelujah. Lord, help well, we can't go to church like we used to could. Well, we can't do this and can't do that. So they just closed down their faith. They quit reading the Bible. Hallelujah. I'll be around somebody reading the Bible. Amen. 
We ain't got to be around somebody who will pray, do we? Amen. But a lot of people have closed down their faith in their own personal life yes. because of what's going on in the world instead of saying, you know what? I might not can do what I exactly how I used to could do, but I can still do something. For the glory of God. I can still read, hallelujah, if I'm by myself or if I'm with 150 people. I can still pray if I'm by myself or with 2,000 people. I can still seek God's face if I'm by myself or with 4 million people. Hallelujah. God begins to pour out and this is the time for the church to shine. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, I've told you before and I'm telling you again, God is doing some separating across the church world of this, of this world and of this nation. He's separating the sheep from the goats. He's separating some, some wheat from the shaft. I'm telling you tonight, God's going to have a people. He's going to have a remnant. Isn't that what he told Elijah? When Elijah was upset, or was Elijah or Elisha? It was Elijah. Uh, but he told one, one of those two prophets. They was upset. They was at the cave, and there was, there was belly aching, and oh me, and oh my, what? Amen. Hallelujah. God said, I'm going to have a people. I'm going to have a remnant. Let me tell you, in 2020, God's going to have a remnant. We can be in that remnant or we can sit by and watch. Hallelujah. I'm not a, I'm not a spectator. I'm a participator. Hallelujah. I'm going to be in the bunch. I'm going to be in the remnant. Hallelujah. Ain't somebody else going to get my blessing because I'm going to get it myself. Ain't somebody else going to tell somebody about the love of God that we're not been supposed to tell them about the love of God. Oh, yes. We, 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 many people tell the same people uh, about the love of God. But what I'm saying by that, is I'm not going to sit down on God. I'm going to tell people about the love of God even if somebody else tells them and other people tell them. I'm not going to quit telling them about Jesus. Hallelujah. Because he's placing it in my heart. I'm talking about I'm not losing the faith. We can't lose the faith, church. If we lose the faith, we've cast out on the wrong side of the ship and the enemy is going to take over our life if we if we lose our faith. we got to keep going. We've got to have faith. We've got to believe. Oh, I know it might look gloomy. Oh, I, I, I know it might sound bad, but well, we got to keep going. Let's see, what sister? <clears throat> what sister? I, I'm trying to remember what's, uh, y'all was on the, uh, the conference call the other night. Blue, Blue, uh, sister Rita said, said this, if I remember correctly. Said, you know what, that song, everybody remembers he called. That song about uh, uh, gloom and despair and agony over me. Oh, y'all remember that song? Where, uh, people, uh, where they used to sing that. You know, that's what many people are singing that instead of uh, uh, singing that song. Oh, my hope is in Jesus. Thank God my yesterday's gone. See, people are singing agony and despair instead of all my hopes in Him. Hey. Hallelujah. I'm talking about faith. We got to keep the faith, church. We got to keep the faith, church. All you watching tonight, we got to keep the faith. We can't give up. We can't give in. We got to keep the faith. We got to keep believing. Hallelujah. You see, I, I'm not going to ride in the left side of the ship. I'm going to ride in a right side up ship that's going to glory, that's serving God, that's doing what's right. <clears throat> Hallelujah. You know what'll happen on the left side of the ship? You'll fall out. I'll never forget me and my cousin when we was fishing down in Bay Lake. He had a little John boat, and I told you before, y'all know I can't swim. He had a little John boat, had one of those uh, uh, seats on the back bench of a little John boat, I've seen John boat, and it had the metal frame, you know, where it just clamps down. And I was sitting there fishing, and for some reason, I don't know how in the world I did it, and uh, for some reason, I, I got to leaning back too much, I guess, and I fell out of the boat in the water. Thank God we was only about four foot deep fishing for bread. <laughs> well, I might not even be here tonight, praise the Lord. I thank, I thank God for that. I'll never forget, you see, I'm talking about, I'm talking about, the, about the ship. I'm talking about the, the, the waters are raging. And we've got to make sure we stay in the ship and we stay right. We do what God tells us to do. <clears throat> there was another time, I don't, I don't know why I'm telling you this, but you know, like this too. There was another time, me and my cousin was fishing on a little whip. We was in a, <clears throat> I believe we was in a bass boat this time. <clears throat> and uh, we, we was fishing, and for some reason, when he threw his the fishing line out, he threw the whole fishing pole out. He let somehow instead of just let go of the, you know, your bait caster, you push the button and, and hold it. For some reason, he let go of the whole thing and the rod went in the water. Well, guess what old, old, old cousin Dave, old cousin Dave said, I'll get it. And I jumped out of the boat to get it. And I can't, remember, I can't swim. I jumped out of the boat to get his rod. I really wasn't thinking about me not being able to swim. I jumped out of the boat and the next thing I know, I'm holding on to the side of the boat. I said, get me in here. I can't swim. Him. I can't swim. And it was a sight. He must have said we didn't get his rod and reel, but I wasn't. I wasn't praying, but we had some good time. But I'm talking about when we get out of the ship 
And when we get on the wrong side of the ship and we fall out, things can go wrong and things can happen. We can drown in the in the cares and the things of this world. We can drown in the in the obstacles that the enemy puts around us. There's there's all kinds of obstacles out there outside the ship that we got to stay away from. You know what we're supposed to be doing? We're supposed to be catching fish. We're supposed to be catching fish. That's what we're supposed to be. Not catching all these things in the world. Not catching, oh hallelujah. Not catching attitudes and not catching ideas and thoughts, but we're supposed to be catching fish. You know what that means? We're supposed to be fishers of men. The Bible tells us that. We've got to be catching people. We've got to be catching them. Uh, too, oh, hallelujah. Too many times we want to clean the catch before we catch the catch. Amen. Amen. That's right. We've got to get back to a place where we catch the fish and let God do the clean. Amen. Let God do the work. Because when God does it, it lasts. Yes. When we try to do it, it won't last. You can try your best to clean up somebody all you want to, but it won't last. But when God does the clean up, It'll hold on, it'll hold true, and it'll last. Hallelujah, God is so good. Hallelujah, so on the left side, there's loss of faith, there's discouragement. <clears throat> Thirdly, on the left side <coughs> of the ship where nothing's happening good, there's a, there's a loss of desire for salvation. On the left side of the ship, when there's discouragement and there's loss of faith, People aren't wanting to see salvation as much anymore. People aren't wanting to get saved much anymore. People aren't wanting to get back right with God. And I'm talking about people that have backslid, and I'm talking about people that have never known Jesus as a personal Savior. The, the desire to be saved has, has, has been, uh, been, been watered down. The desire to be a Christian has been watered down. The desire uh, to, 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 to want to serve Jesus has been watered down. You see, the, the, the salvation is of less importance on the left side. You see, when they uh, when they caught nothing, they were fixing to hang it up. When they caught nothing on that side, they was going to hang it up and go home. But lo and behold, something happened and something changed. And his name was Jesus. But as we as we look at this, when uh, when when they were on that side and they were finding nothing, there was there was no saving them from their loss. There was no saving them from not having anything because they fished all night and they caught nothing. So there, there, there nothing else could be of more importance. Nothing else was gonna uh, was gonna sink in. And you know we have a lot of people uh, that because of life and because they're used to doing the same old same old, uh, salvation is not as important to them. You know a lot of people. You know a lot of people go to certain churches or a lot of people do certain things in their walk because grandma or grandpa did it, mama or daddy did it, or this one or that one did it. You know what? God tells us in the Word of God to work out our own salvation with fear and tremble. He tells us in the Word of God that we, and we're supposed to understand that we, we need to be a, a, we need to be in a place, Bible believing God fear in place because there's a lot of places out here in this world that are not Bible believing God fearing. There's a lot of social clubs in places that are called places of worship right. across our world. And, and, and God's house is not a social club. God's house is a place of worship, a place of prayer, a place to where salvation should be of most important. You know, the greatest thing that can, I love preaching the gospel. I love preaching as Noah was, Arky. But let me tell you, the greatest uh, thing and the greatest happening in my ministry that I can see uh, with my own physical eyes is people saved under the ministry God has entrusted me with. That's the greatest thing that we can ever have as ministers of the gospel. I'm not talking about just credential ministry. I'm talking about everybody. You're all called to preach the gospel uh, to all the preachers and to tell people about Jesus. And so the greatest happening in your life besides your salvation is to see others saved through, through you, you being able to witness to them or tell them or bring them to church or whatever the case may be. And so uh, salvation has got to be of uh, utmost importance. But you see, Jesus come by. We're talking about all the negatives, so we'll get to the positive. Jesus come by and said, hey, you caught any meat? They said, no. He said, well, why don't you cast on the other side? And when they cast on the other side, lo and behold, they couldn't even pull up the net. It was so full of fishes. It was so good. It was so wonderful. Because when they, <clears throat> when they cast on the right side, the right side is Jesus. The left side is the enemy. The right side is Jesus. When they cast on the right side, hallelujah, you know what happened? There was encouragement that began to come in their life. Because when they began to see that, hey, we haven't lost our neck. So, and they didn't know it was Jesus at that time. But no doubt God's power was anointed and they ended up finding out it was him down the line. But we understand uh, that, that they understood that they hadn't lost their knack, that they just had been on the wrong side. They needed to be on the right side for once. They needed to be on the right side doing the right thing. You see, they were encouraged. Philippians 4 and 13, I can do 
do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Hallelujah. They begin to understand. You know what? Hallelujah. Uh, we've got our encouragement back. We're encouraged because we begin to catch fish. And you know what? That's what we need to see more of in the church world that God's people are getting encouraged daily because, uh, because we're seeing, uh, uh, seeing the kingdom of God built onto. We're seeing people acknowledge Jesus as a personal Savior. We're seeing people sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. We're seeing people go to God's house and read God's Word. Hallelujah. We're seeing all these things and encouragement is on the right side with Jesus. Encouragement begins to come to our life no matter what you're going through. You can only be encouraged through Jesus. He has no discouragement to offer. Jesus has no discouragement to offer. All he has is encouragement. Encouragement. Now the devil has discouragement because when we, if we're on the devil's side, we know that we're going to end up in a place that's horrible and not good. But you see, that's offered through the devil because Jesus wants all to be saved. God is not slack concerning his promise for Jesus to come back. He wants all to come to know Jesus, the personal Savior. Hallelujah. Hallelujah on the right side. Hallelujah. I, I'm trying to, trying to hurry. It won't keep you long tonight. Hallelujah. To be encouraged on the right side and your faith is built up on the right side. It is Matthew 17 and 20. <clears throat> Jesus saith unto them, because of your unbelief, well, verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place. I already said that, haven't you? And it shall remove, and nothing, let me say that again, nothing shall be impossible to you. Amen. We've got to build up that faith. We've got to let that faith be built up. Hallelujah. Now, I know all we have to have is the size of a grain of mustard seed faith. But let me tell you, my, my faith shouldn't be that small all the time. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. When I first got saved, my faith might have been that small. But hallelujah, in, two, in October the 4th, 2020, I'd beat myself up if I had only a grain of mustard seed size faith. My faith is big. Big tonight, church. I'm not bragging on me. I'm bragging on God. My faith is big. Because I know where God brought me from. I know where God's taking me to. I know what God's doing in my life. I know how God's blessed my family, blessed my home, blessed my church. I know how God has blessed everything that I've been involved with. He's blessed on my child. He's blessed everything. He's blessed your life. Hallelujah. So nobody here tonight, nobody doing tonight, you shouldn't have a faith the size of grain of mustard seed. It should be bigger than that. Hallelujah. It should increase daily. Our faith increased daily. Now, I know there's days where the faith dwindles down. I understand that. But it shouldn't stay dwindling for that long. Hallelujah. Our faith should continue to grow. A continual faith is what we live. A continual faith is what we have. And thirdly, thirdly, when we hear Jesus, and we see Jesus, and we cast out on that right side, salvation will be very important to us. John 3 and 17, where God sent not his son to the world to condemn the world, that the world through him might be saved. Jesus came to save those which were lost. He didn't come to save or to heal those that had no need for a physician, but he came to save that which was lost. We have to, I, I preached the message before, we have, they have to get lost. We have to get them lost. People have to realize they're lost before they can be found. That's right. Amen? People's got to realize they're lost before they can be found. People's got to realize they're not saved before they can be saved. People's got to realize what salvation is supposed to be before they can be saved. And so uh, we've got to understand that if we'll share with people and let people know to cast out on the side of Jesus, cast out, let Jesus lead us and guide us and do what he tells us to do because they did what he said. And you know what? They had encouragement. They had their faith built up. And they were able to be saved because they were coming back instead of empty-handed. They was coming back, hallelujah, with a big hand. They was coming back and saying, whoa, look at all the fish. Hallelujah, we can't even pull it in for so many fishes is in the net. Now, you know what? I, I, hallelujah, isn't that a great time? I'll never forget. Uh, I'll never forget when, when I was little, my mom and dad would go down to a place called Little Washington or Chocowinity. And uh, my dad had a 19-foot Allendale fishing boat. And he had one of his metal poles that, or steel poles that you put in the middle. And we had a shrimp net. And, you know, with the doors and all, we would go shrimping down at the coast and, and man it would be hot out there but it would be it would be uh it, it would be fun we had a guy down there that we would uh, shrimp with i'll never forget it you know those are memories that you remember and so i remember uh i remember pulling those shrimp nets and you know you know as a kid you, you all time eating or drinking something or whatever 
And I'll never forget, I got hooked on those uh, snacks called bugles. You ever seen them bugles and little corn snack bugles? Um, anyways, the guy that we, we uh, shrimp dad with, he uh, he had some and he got me started. And that's so why I, I love bugles. But anyways, uh, we would go and, and, and I would say, is it time? Is it time yet? You got to ride around and pull that uh, shrimp net around. You got to ride around and pull it and pull it and pull it. And uh, I mean, it's just, uh, it takes forever. And, and, and then finally it gets time. It gets time to pull it up. And I'm standing there and uh, just looking and looking. And they pull that net up and they dump it on this little trough that's on the edge of the boat uh, on the side. And, and they dump it out and all this stuff, these crabs and all this stuff's flopping. And you know what the next thing happens is? I'm saying, ow, 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 because jellyfish has got all over me. And uh, that jellyfish would sling and the jelly uh, would get on you and sting. You know jellyfish sting? And, and you would see all the crabs and you'd see the shrimp and all that. And it would come in and it was awesome just to see a full load or a full net of all those different things that would come off the ocean. They would come off the waterway, off the off, off in the water. You know, it would be it would be neat. I enjoyed seeing that net that have so much stuff in it. I can just only imagine and the excitement and the joy of these fishermen that that's what they did, used to do and did for a living. That when they would bring it, they brought in this net that was full. I could just see the joy when they would open that net and have all those fishes in there. And have all those fishes because they fished all night and didn't catch nothing. And lo and behold, Jesus tells them to cast on the other side. And lo and behold, here they have a whole net full of fish. That's just how Jesus does. That's just how good he is. When we listen to Jesus, we'll begin to catch all good things in our life. We'll begin to receive all good things in our life. Salvation will be the most important. And you know what? That's the most important thing we need to think about is winning the lost and any cost. That's what the church is for. We're a hospital for those that are sick, those that are lost and undone. We should be praying and saying, God, send in the multitudes of people that are hurting, that are lost and undone, so they'll hear about Jesus and they'll want to be saved and want to accept Jesus in their life. God, send, help us to be prepared. Help us to be ready for the lost and undone to come in and be saved. Because you see, when they get in here, we can tell them how to cast on the right side. The right side with Jesus. Amen? Every one of us can tell them what Jesus can do on the other side. They might have been casting on the wrong side for 79 years. Casting on the wrong side, doing things in the world, and nothing seems to go right. But let me tell you, just one minute of casting on the right side of Jesus will make everything better. Amen. Make everything good. Hallelujah. I don't want to be on the left side of the ship. I want to be on the right side. Amen. I want to be on the right side of Jesus. I want Jesus to work in my life and move in my life and minister through my life and through my heart. I want to be what God wants me to be. And I came tonight to encourage you. When you see that person or those persons that it seems to be casting on the wrong side for so long, help them cast on the right side. Tell them about Jesus. Tell them about his, the faith, the only the size of faith it takes to believe in Jesus and to accept Jesus' salvation in their life. So they can have some encouragement. You see, we see encouragement on every, every. you just turn on the TV, <coughs> discouragement's on every channel. You turn on the radio and you hear negative, negative, negative. You look in the newspaper and you see mostly negative. Now, they do put some positive, but you see mostly negative. I'm tired of hearing and seeing negative. I want to see some positive things about what God's doing. I want to see, I want to hear about, well, 50 people got saved today or two people got saved today or 200 people got saved today or accepted Jesus or sanctified or filled with the Holy Ghost. I want to hear about that again. I don't want to hear about all the mischief and the bad things because as the days uh, <clears throat> go longer and as, long, and, and as long as Jesus tarries, the world's going to wax worse and worse. The Bible tells us. The Bible tells us that everything's being fulfilled that needs to be fulfilled. Jesus is soon coming. That's why I say it every service because he's soon coming. That's why we got to get people to cast it out on the side with Jesus. Cast out and let Jesus work in their life. Cast out and let Jesus do something for them. Let Jesus be Lord of their life. We got to hold on. We got to be encouraged. We got to encourage each other daily. Help each other. That's what we're here for. We got to help each other. Hallelujah. I can't make it without the Lord, but I can't make it without my fellow friends and family helping pray with me for me. And and talk to me and encourage me. I can't, I can't make, we, we need each other's encouragement. Hallelujah. Too many times we get stuck on pride. 
I'm not too proud for somebody to encourage me. I can use all the encouragement I get. I can use all the prayer I can get. I can use all the help I can get. I can use, I can use all that. Because you see, I'm not so proud that I that I think that I, I don't need other people. That I, I'm not so proud that I don't know that I need those around me to help uh, encourage and lift me up and lift our ministry up and lift the church up and lift uh, our neighborhoods and communities and our state up and our country up. We've got to lift each other up, be encouragers, encourage one another, encourage people to try the right side of the ship. If you'll stand with me tonight, those of you watching online, live streaming, those of you here tonight, we're going to pray what we do. I know we're home folk. I know we're, we're, we're Christians and we love the Lord. Just ask the Lord to help us to keep trusting Him, to keep casting on the right side with Him. If there's anyone uh, watching or anyone viewing that you don't know the Lord's a personal Savior or, or you've backslid or you have just been going through some things and haven't been where you need to be with God, all you got to do is tell the Lord you're sorry right now when we pray to please forgive you and He'll forgive you and He'll change you and help you to be what you need to be. As we're praying tonight, ask God to help you keep casting out with Him. Heavenly Father, we truly thank you one more time for allowing us to be in your house. Thank you for your many blessings. Thank you for touching our lives, for ministering our lives, for being a, a wonderful God to us. Lord, we thank you for everything. God, we ask you to have your way. Reach down and touch you in the midst of your people. Lord, reach down and touch each and every one. Those that couldn't be here tonight, for whatever reason, those that are sick, we can bless them and touch them. Lord, all the ones live streaming, all the ones here, if there's anyone that's, that, that's not saved or anyone that's backslid or anyone that's not where they need to be with you, God, I ask you to please forgive them and change their life. Help them to do what's right. Lord, help everybody that's ready to go that's on fire for you. Lord, to keep casting on the right side with you. Lord, help us to understand that we get encouragement on the right side with you, Jesus. And Lord, help us to understand we get our faith built up. Our faith grows on the right side with you, Jesus. And Lord, the importance and the desire to see souls saved and see people one for the kingdom of God, that, that takes place on the right side with you, Jesus. Lord, we love you tonight. God, we ask you to go with each and every one. Keep everybody safe. Watch over us. Then we go forth and do your will and win the lost and cause. We have to have a fire, a joy, and excitement, and determination to serve you and to continue going forth for your glory, your name's sake. Lord, we ask you to have your way tonight. Lord, reach down and bless every life, every heart, every home. Do the word, God. We believe you. We trust you. We thank you. In Jesus' holy name we pray. And the church said, Amen. Amen. I want to thank you for coming tonight. Appreciate you being here. Don't forget, Jesus loves you. Pastor David loves you as well. God bless each and every one of you. Hallelujah. Hope you have a good week and a wonderful time. Hallelujah. 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 Wonderful time this week. Look